All right, so for those of you just tuning in, we're about to spectate a 3v3 on the map Serengeti between my viewers as part of World Elephant Day. So basically, we're going to showcase the six different elephant units and civilizations in Age of Empires 2. Assuming that this match turns out to be good, this might be part of a two-part video series where I will use the gameplay clips from this match to provide a more in-depth analysis video on the stat comparison, metagame usage, and civilizations of every elephant in the game. If I do do that, you'll find a link to that in the video description below, as well as a link to my live stream, Facebook, and Twitter where you can get updates on when I'm streaming next. This video, though, will mostly be focused on the game itself. So, without further ado, let's get this game started. Happy World Elephant Day, everybody. We've selected some excellent, excellent players today to showcase some of the elephant civilizations. Now, it goes without saying, though, that the goal of today's game is to actually showcase some real gameplay. So, none of the players here are expected to make elephants for the entire game, but they are expected to play as an elephant civilization. Huh? On Serengeti, do you not start with a castle if it's regicide? The whole point was you're supposed to start with the castle so you could make the elephant unit units. <laughs> disaster, disaster. I picked Serengeti because it's thematic. There is an African elephant and an Asian elephant, and I feel like I've been gypped, man. What is this? You just have a watchtower? <laughs> At least they get the fancy king. He's got his umbrella so he doesn't get sun for his delicate complexion, my goodness. So, for those of you just tuning in, allow me to take a brief moment to introduce today's players. We have Flatch playing as the Red Vietnamese, teaming up with Pete as the Green Burmese, and Jainapul playing as the Yellow Malay. On the opposing team, we have Kanye Twest playing as the Purple Indians, Toko Raka playing as the Teal Khmer, and Okerville playing as the Blue Persians. So we have the three Rise of the Raja Sivs versus one Rise of the Raja Siv, and then two of the older ones, Indians being from the Forgotten, and the Persians being from classic, classic Age of Empires, the Age of Kings. So many different elephant units, and of course, the most powerful elephant unit of them all, <laughs> the neutral elephant animal, which is just a reskinned boar. I'm very glad that the developers have decided to add more variety in the actual animals, kind of like in Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds. It's really cool. The elephant, the most important elephant unit of them all to give my analysis on is this one, which is it has 400 food as opposed to a boar of 340. Pretty big difference. And this unit also has seven base attack, which is not displayed here. And it has plus three attack bonus versus the scout cavalry. And then it has plus four versus eagle warriors. This is intended to make it a little bit harder to actually do some boar laming, but people do it regardless where they use their scout to try and steal the enemy. So the more you know. Hopefully I taught you something new today. For the most part, I'm going to be talking about general strategy in this game rather than the actual different elephant units themselves. We'll be talking about them on more of a broader basis, but I think it's important that we start with the Persians player who is... Is this guy? Is this guy? It's this guy. It's Okerville. Have not seen him in a while. Good to have you back. So, the Persians have the classic war elephant unit, which is super duper expensive, costing a whopping 200 food. So, it's... Uh, not quite twice as expensive as a battle elephant, but it costs a lot. Look at him body blocking his villager. Oh no! Not ah, gotta pan the camera away. Or is he going to wait? He's body blocking the elephant. Is he gonna save his villager? Wow! That was a sick play. I thought <laughs> thought I was gonna have to do one of those moments where I have to pan the camera away to avoid the disaster. But Okerville, did you see that? That was sick. Putting his king's fat pudgy royal body to good use, blocking that elephant. Slowing it down just a little bit to save his villager that was at a measly, just a meager 4 HP. Excellent play there from Okerville. So he's playing as the classic Persians. The, uh, the Elite War Elephant is a unit that sees some competitive play, but generally only in super late game situations on perhaps maps like Black Forest and eh, if the game goes really late in Arena, maybe, but really it's primarily a deathmatch unit. And it's very powerful in deathmatch. One of the best ways to deal with the uh, war elephant unit and just elephants in general are actually things like mass heavy scorpions in deathmatch. We see as a common response to that since heavy scorpions do have an attack bonus versus them. It's like plus five or something. It's actually very good, especially because the elephants are huge. They have a gigantic hitbox. Well, actually them having a big hitbox makes scorpions a little worse versus them. But still, they're so slow. You do a lot of pass through damage. And compared to the battle elephant unit, which is a unique unit that all four of the Rise of the Raja civs have access to. You can find more information on that by going to the video description below and watching my civ overviews of them. Vietnamese, Khmer, Burmese, and Malay. 
The Battle Elephant is like a cheaper, faster, weaker version of the Persian War Elephant. And when you scale it down like that, it actually creates a, a more interesting dynamic, because the Persian War Elephant is kind of linear in its application. It's so utterly expensive and so powerful that it's a risk that players can't often afford to take outside of situations where their economy is massive. You'll generally find that the the trade-off of getting converted by a monk is, is too large, and your opponent will really be able to uh, kind of uh, fatigue you out by going for things like halberdiers. It's just a, it's a big value swing. Uh, halberdiers might lose one-on-one -on -one to an elephant, but you end up losing so much gold and so much food, and the Persians have to dedicate a very, very large amount of their economy to actually produce elephants consistently, and they have to build them from a castle. So the battle elephant has... It actually does have a lot of identity to it as a unit, uh, particularly because you can mass it up at the stable, and it's, it's faster. It is still hard countered, though, by things like monks, halberdiers, and camels, as well as heavy scorpions, which is something that I feel like people don't utilize frequently enough, and I, I'm very curious to see if our Khmer player, Tokoraka, will remember the secret technology. So, speaking of the Khmer, I think it's uh, this is a good transition into them, where the Khmer are... Wow, look at how fast this madman's advancing. Respect. The Khmer have the Ballista Elephant, which is one of the most badass units in Age of Empires 2. It is an elephant with a scorpion tacked on its back. It does a lot less damage than a scorpion, but you get that double crossbow technology, which is major props decision from one of the most interesting, fun technologies I've ever seen, where heavy scorpions and Ballista Elephants fire two projectiles instead of just one. That's sick. Uh, the unit is like a really bulky, slow scorpion. How do you beat it? The secret, uh, as verified by expert players such as Tato, is you just add monks. Seriously, monks beat all of the elephant units, and the Malay, I believe, are the only elephant civ with heresy, although the Indians might actually have heresy. I'm not entirely sure of that. At least the rest of these guys get faith. Heresy, of course, means that your converted units die uh, instead of switching sides when converted which is huge, and that's one of the reasons why the Persians are so hard countered by monks. It's just a gigantic resource swing. And and yes, that still actually applies to when you're dealing with Ballista Elephants. But you can also... Ballista Elephants have the same weaknesses as both a cavalry unit and a siege unit. So likewise, you can deal with them with things like uh, halberdiers, provided you have some onager support at the back, some of the bard cannons, etc. Heavy camels are still good. Paladins and whatnot can still be good. So Togarok is going for an extremely fast... Khmer Scout Rush because he does not have the barracks requirement. Uh, he has no building requirements for anything, whether that be advancing the next age or uh, to build other buildings. So the Khmer have an excellent Scout Rush, which I do, of course, showcase in my Khmer Civ overview video. Meanwhile, on the opposing side of the map, Kanye Twist is walling up. I find it. I thought the whole point of this was that they'd start with a castle, but <laughs> looks like they do not. So you're Togaraga, what do you do in this situation? Well, the Burmese uh, three militia drush is quite powerful because they get plus one attack on their infantry per age starting in the feudal age. It used to apply in the dark age, actually, fun fact. It's pretty spooky. Uh, Togaraga does not have loom yet, actually. What exactly happened there? How did he lose that oddly specific amount of gold? I'm really confused. I don't know why how it's possible that he would be missing that specific amount of gold. Oh, it's probably because he'd just been mining, like, a little bit of it. <laughs> he really needs four more gold to get Loom, otherwise this tower's going to decimate him. I think he is responding to this correctly, but we'll have to see. I won't get that much of a chance to talk about all the different elephant units in this game, but so far I talked about the Ballista Elephant, the War Elephant unit, and the Battle Elephant a little bit. It's a scaled back, it has a more broader application, weaker type elephant unit. Thank you, by the way, uh, Bourbon Tohurt, or Urban Cohort, for the $6. He says, can you can a can as a canner can can a can? Nailed it. Uh, thank you so much, MemTV, for hosting me for 600 viewers. Oh my god, thank you, seriously, Mem. Oh my gosh. I My only regret is that I was not able to watch you casting the games because I had my scheduled stream now. Thank you so much, man. That means a lot to me. I definitely encourage all of you uh, who are watching my stream now and who watch this on YouTube to also check out MemTV's channel. He's one of the most dedicated uh, Age of Empires content creators in the entire community and a fantastic person, more importantly, so... Great guy, definitely recommend you check out his content, especially if you're looking for a more hype style commentary and just consistent expert game coverage. Thank you, Gudiger, for the 35 bits. He says, This isn't Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> All gold frontier symbols. I would like to play some Emerald. Emerald is one of my favorite ones. Uh, I enjoyed that one a lot. 
I think you crashed my CLR browser, which you do uh, almost every single time. All right, no, you didn't. So the other elephant unit in the game uh, that I didn't uh, talk about yet is actually the... I keep handing the wrong person. You, you're the Indians. Okay, so Kanye Twest will be our Indians player. They have the elephant archery unit. This unit, I think, is uh, fundamentally misevaluated by a lot of people in that uh, there are two types of players in the Age of Empires 2 community. Totally overgeneralizing here, but the point is, is that generally, two people, one of them thinks that the Indian Elephant Archer is completely useless in 100% of situations, and it's just a bad unit in general, and then there's the other player who thinks it's absolutely broken beyond reason, and there's no way to deal with it. In reality, this unit is actually somewhere in the middle, and I encourage people to play around with it. The Elephant Archer is really expensive and difficult to, to mass up, and I... I'm not a huge fan of the unit as a whole because it feels very feast or famine to me and that it's only really good if you mass up a lot of them. And once you get enough of them massed up, maybe you're very frustrating to play against because it feels like there aren't really sufficient counters to this. And the Ballista Elephant kind of feels the same way. But good news is, is that uh, the unit does have its counters. You know, you can still beat it with monks despite the Elephant Archers having the range. Mass Onagers, Halberdiers, Heavy Camels. You just have you have to actually make counter units and have a wide variety of them. You need something at the front uh, and then some Siege at the back to try and, and pick them off. And it's just a really slow strategy to get out. But as far as uh, reasons why you would make them, there's really good versus Elephant units. Uh, sorry, not versus Elephant units. Versus Archer units. So they're super good against that, and that's because they have high HP and they have high pierce armor. They've got like three. It is worth noting, though, that in order to balance the unit out, the unit actually has negative two archer armor, so things like elite skirmishers, for example, are pretty decent versus elephant archers. But again, you, you have to... A lot of the players who I feel like struggle against these late-game units like elite cataphracts, elite mamluks, and all the big elephants typically struggle because they're not only making the wrong units, they're not actually making any counter units, but also, in addition, they just don't have a big enough economy to compete with their opponent. And I think that that is a main reason why they struggle. Very interesting that he would mining camp this one instead of this one. But overall, I mean, Tokarok is doing it immaculately well. Like, nice job just defending against this. Seriously, this is, uh, this is impressive. Almost everyone's going for a scout rush this game. Of course, just trying to secure some early game map control, full well knowing it's Serengeti. A very aggressive open map. I wanted to do Serengeti Regicide because I thought that the... Them starting with the cat... Whoa, 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 why is this king there? <laughs> cut the video! Cut the video! Oh my god! <laughs> what? Why is this king there? Oh shit! Oh my god, it'd be so funny if he just lost here. And then I, if he just loses here, I'll just stitch on something else at the end of this. I'll, I'll I'll get some gameplay of some elephants. Oh my god! Run, little king, run! Five attack per hit. Oh, he's got the hill advantage. And the king's glitching out. Is it the game? Is it over? Oh my god! Poor Token Raka! How did he lose? What? Did I post this anyway? Happy World Elephant Day! I hope you guys enjoyed my elephant commentary. I'll, I'll do it again, I guess. <laughs> God, he's fucking dead. Are you kidding me? Oh, is Zero Empires in my chat? Hey, hey, man. Welcome to the stream, Zach. Welcome to the stream, man. All right, we're, we're remaking the game. <laughs> All right, let's remake. Let's remake. Oh man, disaster! I'm gonna go message. Uh, I'm gonna message people. We're gonna remake the game. This game's over. <laughs> oh, oh! Do I make this its own video, or do I stitch it on the end somewhere else? You tell me. unit against mass ranged units but still though it's hard countered by the typical elephant counters and notably it actually has negative two archer armor which is mostly relevant when your opponent is using things like elite skirmishers which makes them a decent answer primarily though we don't usually see elephant archers being the unit of choice from the indians usually they would prefer to go for things like imperial camels arbalest hand cannon with bombard cannons but actually we're playing on patch 5.5 which is the ultimate segue into the check out this production value <laughs> Here's the patch 5.5 notes in case anyone's curious what the, some of the balance changes were. One of the most notable balance changes is that the uh, Indians actually lost the Arbalest technology. And this is a really interesting nerf. I'd be happy to do a more in-depth balance discussion video if you guys want me to. I'd definitely be interested. 
Patch, of course, contains a lot of other significant changes I won't go over during this video because we've got a game to cast. But losing Arbalest is a pretty big nerf and an interesting one for the Indians. It wouldn't have been the one that I went with, but I, I totally see the logic behind it. And that the Indians were powerful for reasons beyond their intended purposes. Like, they happened to have a particularly powerful archer range, and they were really abusing that, I think, combined with their uh, reduced cost on villagers. Actually, going for crossbows into Arbalest was just way, way too good. It was just, the Indians had the tools to get to the late game, and then they had way too many good things to actually make once they got there. I see our browsers crashed. One second, I'm fixing that right now. Thank you so much for the 400 bits. Really appreciate it. As well as you Intensivo for the five dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some difference says Elephant Day fun fact: Elephants consume as much as 300 to 495 pounds of food per day. Huh. That's a lot of food. You Intensivo says happy to see you doing well. Thank you, you Intensivo. I've been feeling very sick recently due to my allergies. Why is Tokarakis king all the way in the corner over here and not in his own base? Well, that's, that doesn't, that, that, that triggers me, man. <laughs> oh, welcome to Stream Pony Ron Swanson. If I missed anyone's hellos, feel free to tag me again in the Twitch chat. I will make sure to get back to you. Again, no one is actually obligated to make uh, nothing but elephants this game. I actively encourage them not to. But this will be a good example of, you know, just how useful the elephants can be. Uh, they are, they're the type of unit that I think should rarely be the bulk of your army, but rather are... Generally powerful support units, at least they can't be the bulk of your army just because they're so expensive and so easy to counter in the late game. Interesting to note is that Scission made a lot of design, like conscious design decisions to try and balance out the elephant units. Like for example, if you were doing a 1v1 mirror match, you wanted to make sure that every single one of the Rise of the Rajah's civilizations had the tools necessary to counter each other's battle elephants. So that's why all the Rise of the Rajah's civs have the halberdier unit. That's a nasty looking scout rush coming out from Giant Apple. Malay don't have... I, they, they advance the ages 80% faster, which does help with their scout rush. And actually, yeah, I mean, he's zoning Tokarok off his second lumber camp. We usually see players building a second lumber camp around when they have maybe four to six or seven villagers per camp. That's when it starts getting inefficient. They start bumping up on each other. Uh, let's see. Chrono! Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to stream M8-1992. Pleasure to have you. This is technically the second game, mate, dude, yes. And welcome to the stream. <laughs> Alright. Well, looks like Tokaraka is building a market. I wonder why. Because he's the Khmer, right? So he doesn't need... He doesn't have any building requirements. Oh, I know why. Because he doesn't have enough food. This is a really interesting play on the part of Tokaraka. He has so much gold. And I think the reason that he's doing this is because just the way his base is laid out. He got a little bit both unlucky and lucky with his map generation in that his stone is safe. His main goal to save. But he just doesn't, you know... The rest of his base is pretty vulnerable. This woodline's not that great. So he's actually just going to buy his way to the castle age. That's a pretty sick play. I'm happy to see that one. Now, the battle elephant unit I haven't mentioned yet was a secondary unique unit that was given to all four of the Rise of the Rajah's civilizations. It's like a war elephant, but scaled down. And that gives it a broader metagame application because it so turns out that the truly exaggerated nature of the Persian war elephant makes it difficult to use a lot of the time because you just can't it you just can't afford to make a unit that's that slow and that hard countered by things that are so much cheaper than it, it creates these big momentum swings and the battle elephant just has more more uses as a result of being scaled back now Tokaraka will be defending us this correctly by making some spearmen spearmen of course do kill these scouts in three hits each I like the plus one pierce armor choice on the part of giant apple to Resist those town center shots a little bit. He does have to watch out for the uh, the castle here, but I'd say this rush has been absolutely a success. He's done a lot of economic damage to Tokaraka, preventing these villagers from accessing this lumber camp and even picking off uh, a spearman as well as... I think he picked off like two spearmen and a villager or something. Pretty rock solid. And also just the distracting nature of his rush. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, uh, Ogreville will be going for a night rush of his own, also with the plus one pierce armor. Uh, the Battle Elephant's actually a very strong unit that does see a lot of competitive play in super late game situations. We haven't seen it that much in actual tournaments, but that's just due to the way the tournaments are actually set up. On maps like Black Forest, or should it come to the super late game in Arena, this, this unit does have uh, pretty broad applications. And I've always wondered if the Malay, since their Battle Elephants cost 25% less, if they are capable of going for a Castle Age Battle Elephant rush. I've seen Tato experiment with it before. It seems like it's potentially viable. It's, it's a unit that's a lot stronger than it seems, and 
And it's something that we definitely have our eye on. <laughs> All right, well, Togaraka in the Castle Age now, able to defend themselves in Battle Elephants. I feel like the Khmer have some of the better Battle Elephants in the game due to the uh, bonus movement speed. And what's the other thing they have? Yeah, they got Tusk Swords plus three attack is really sick. Is really, really sick. I, I think the Vietnamese Battle Elephants are not that good. Uh, I find a lack of husbandry is truly awful. And also a lack of Blast Furnace really cripples them as well. And they just don't have the eco to really take advantage of that. Still, though, the Vietnamese are pretty well-designed civilization from a tech tree standpoint in that they have guilds and all the necessary late game eco upgrades like crop rotation, uh, for example, that actually give them a very good late game economy despite having a very weak early game one. So still no, not a big fan of the lack of husbandry and blast furnace. I think the extra 30 HP doesn't generally offset that. Uh, I do like the Burmese ones a lot though. I think the Malay ones in the late game, <sighs> are generally not very good. They're like the only Civ that doesn't have viable late game battle elephants, and I'd probably favor the Burmese and the Khmer over uh, the Vietnamese in that regard. But the Vietnamese, it does synergize a little bit well with their push, but it's just a really expensive unit. Uh, don't make battle elephants though versus the Goths, because they can just make halberdiers. If you're trying to answer their Huskarls, the Vietnamese should be making champions. Uh, and even then, that's still not that efficient. Just be really, be really wary of how grossly cost inefficient it is to actually go for that. Yeah, I just feel like the 15% faster movement speed is a really sick, sick bonus. Because uh, one of the main drawbacks of the Persian War Elephant is it's just so, so slow uh, that the unit can be kited very difficult. Uh, be kited very easily, sorry. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, some crossmen on the defense for Giant Apple. Nice to see him transitioning properly into a more mid game unit. Also has a battle elephant of his own, and he has to deal with Kanye Twest to the enemy pocket with those Indians' camels. With the additional plus one one armor that they get as a civilization, as well as the plus five attack versus buildings, it kind of makes them a substitute replacement unit for knights. They're pretty decent in that regard. I, I really like the crossman choice, though, here from Giant Apple, because if you're going to answer camels or mamluks and whatnot, I think that arbalest are generally the way to go. Uh, yeah, a little bit of raiding going on over here. The camel's significantly worse raiding unit than a knight due to having only six attack, but still capable of picking off some villagers. Six attack is just enough. If it had five attack, it would take an additional hit to actually kill the villagers because of the villagers having one melee armor from Loom. My voice is already dying. Ay ay ay. Allergies, man. Ugh. Okay, so. Janipal will be able to defend against this. I wonder if Kanye Twist had an opportunity to actually pick off a free battle elephant there. If you're wondering why the Malay battle elephants, I believe, don't have any longevity to them, is because the Malay have one of the worst stables in the game. They have the 25% discount, which is nice, but they're missing both of the late game defense upgrades for their cavalry units. So they're missing so much pierce armor. It's three pierce armor and then two dura armor, which means this unit just disintegrates. They're also missing bloodlines too, so the Malay have one of the worst stables in the game. I don't think it's the worst stable, but it's debatable. Um, the Vikings also have a particularly bad set of mounted units. <laughs> Speaking of weird bonuses, the Vietnamese, since their archery range units gain additional 10%, 15%, and then 20% HP, um, which was one of the things that I suggested early in development, is that we like, just why not allow all the archery range units to benefit from it? I wonder if that gives them a viable cavalry archery rush at all, but my guess is it doesn't because they don't have the economy to sustain that kind of production. <laughs> Uh, I'm playing on HD right now, Ofefer, but I have uh, routinely casted expert games and tournaments on Vubli, and you can find some of those on my YouTube channel. Elephant fight here, you can see exactly how tanky this unit is. So very difficult to take down. And so far, it looks like this is shaping up to be a much better game than the last one, which was an absolute disaster of epic proportions. Burmese Knight's coming in here, backed by two wolves. See if he can get some pickoffs on the villagers. Of course, these guys, when they're raiding, are going to do their best to avoid the town center and go for any of those exterior vulnerable villagers that uh, are not protected by the castles or the town centers. Now, the castle, though, is going to be a large obstacle, and I wonder if... Uh, oh, sorry, they're on the same team. Regardless, Pete has to... He's, he's actually going to... Yeah, he's going to lure the wolves straight onto this, this villager. God. <laughs> Pete's going to look for some pickoffs here and go straight into Okerville's base. Uh, Ogreville being the Persians actually can make camels, and I would really recommend that he does that, but he's not doing that right now because he doesn't want to forfeit any offensive pressure. Oh, nice! Not a single villager lost. Well played there by Flatch. Kanye West on the hunt, looking for another villager to pick off, but alas, 
has to find a new raiding target. So he's on three town centers, which is actually very, very good. And he's not really committing to his camels that much. Yeah, I believe he's only on one stable, and he has only the uh, first level defense upgrades. So it's not very much. Togaraka on the defensive, but Flatch is a little bit behind too, so then he balances out. Togaraka with a second town center. I, how do I feel about this placement? I actually think this is good uh, that he would do this. This woodline sucks, but he doesn't have much of a choice. I like this this house placement. Uh, it's not closed at the back over here, but that's fine. It protects these farmers. It protects this woodline. But most importantly, that's not his only town center. Uh, he also has another one over here, which is a much better woodline. And again, this gives some place for his stone miners to actually run to if need be. Overall, I like how Tokaraka has set up his base, but it's just very, very open. And that's why I wanted these players to... I felt like the settings would encourage some interesting gameplay, right? Ooh, he's going to do the elephant drop! Elephants with the slight cleave damage, dealing 50% damage in an AoE, does make them very good versus Crossman. Look at that, 15% faster movement speed. He's jamming that pike in there, <laughs> outrunning the Malay battle elephants. Look at that value. I need to switch over to, uh, to Giant Apple's uh, crossbows to see their uh, HP going down. The, honestly, the radius is not that big. I think it's like a blast radius of 0.5, but ooh, ooh, look at that. All right, that didn't really work out that well, but that was some, that was some pretty sick value. I did like to see that. <laughs> Meanwhile, I feel like Ogreville has an immaculately well crafted defense again. His base pretty well oriented. I, I do worry about his wood lines, but oh no, he's got a town center at the back. I like this. It's just a very very difficult base to crack, and he even has a nice makeshift wall off of his buildings as well as some massed up knights. I still think that camels are, are worth considering, but perhaps he fears the option of enemy crossbowmen. Certainly something worth considering. And now, T is in here trying to defend. I think that a couple battle elephants backed by camels could be really good. He just has to make sure to engage with the camels while the battle elephants takes out the crossbowmen, and it looks like they're doing exactly that. And here comes Twest with additional camel support. He actually will be able to mop up this army. Great coordination on their part. Yeah, cleaning up all the crossbowmen. You see how he pulled back the camels to try and draw away the crossbowmen fire, allowing Tokaraka to get some free hits on them with his battle elephants. So great play on both their parts. Tokaraka lives to fight another day. He's doing a great job building up his economy. Still, though, even though Giant Apple sustained heavy losses, I would say that his rush has been strategically worthwhile just because he's done a lot of eco damage to Tokaraka, really putting him off his groove. Flatch, though, how many town centers is he on? Uh, he's on three, okay, so he's he's definitely keeping up. His fourth town center is on the way now. Giant Apple at a meager 47 population compared to Tokaraka 61, so yeah, Tokaraka boom back up in this. Giant Apple might have a large score, but I believe he's actually on. Okay, yeah, he has three town centers, but you can tell by how few villagers are adjacent to these that these two town centers are fresh. Just popped up pretty soon. Uh, Mr. Mashala, welcome to the stream. Probably missed a couple hellos. Feel free to say hi to me again. It's tough to balance between reading the chat and saying hello to everybody as well as also casting. So feel free to pop in and ask me questions between games as well. <laughs> good to see you, good to see you. Welcome to the stream as well. Uh, Pambrand's Twitch. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so, yeah, definitely avoid the, the full caps, though. Gotta mind the mods. Pete on the defense with his knights. He has bloodlines and plus two defense for maximum archer resistance. And there aren't really any archer units, actually, that this helps against, but the main reason he's doing this is just so that he can raid better. The Having more survivability on your knights is more important than forging for raiding, generally speaking, even though forging allows you to pick up a villager a little bit sooner. The only time you really want things like forging are when you're fighting Huskarls with other melee units, for example. That would be a time when you would do that. And it's, you know, debatable with things like throwing Axemen and Mamelukes. It's situational, but for example, you, you absolutely want forging when you're dealing with uh, Huskarls. And actually, interestingly enough, if you're making pikemen, you do want forging uh, to take out the knights faster. The additional armor does not actually help you that much. So, right now I would say that the team on the south side of the map, the Cool Colors, do have a little bit of a lead, and that's just Kanye Twist having a massive, massive economy boost. Yes, he's a 130 population in the Imperial Age. Pete also in the Imperial Age, but I'm assuming that if we go to his perspective that it's... Well, we'll go to his perspective in a moment. So these camels taking a lot of uh, a lot of damage, but he will retreat out of there. Yeah, Pete at 105, so he's about behind by about 30 population. A little bit dicey of a situation, but Kanye Twist will pull out. I'm assuming he's going to tech into Imperial Camels. 
Oh, he doesn't really have the money for it. Yeah, so he's getting the defense upgrades, making a couple of elephant archers. Great, great unit versus these ranged units. Single skirm thrown in here. I wonder if that's uh, preemptively predicting the elephant archers as an option. Not sure. Yeah, and some Burmese Arambai. This is a cool unit. Element LF, Wolf Mysterious says, is the elephant splash damage the same as the Slav's infantry splash? I don't believe so. Uh, I believe the elephants deal 50% of their damage in an AoE, and the Slavs, I think it's the same mechanic as the Byzantines, where it's like trample damage. I think it's a flat 5. Ooh, ambush here. Sort of. <laughs> what is this ambush? Oh, Fort West had his guys on stand ground or something like that, and then Giant Apple's like, let me just use this as an opportunity to slink in over there. So this is great. Uh, what Giant Apple did is he's trying to make it so as few of his crossmen are exposed to the outside as possible. He's clumping them up. So they're kind of like a ball. Uh, having no concept of personal space whatsoever. But this is important because it allows you to focus fire down these units, and this is a tactic that we see often in custom scenarios. Uh, he's going to get clobbered, though, because the plus four, plus five pierce armor is just is too much. Crossbows don't do now. Arambai, grossly inaccurate unit, which again, you can learn more about in my Burmese Civ overview. It's very good against close range units, but it's very weak versus any kind of ranged units due to its low pierce armor and just horrible accuracy. It's like 25% in the Castle Age for the regular Arambai and then 35% for the Elite Arambai. It's also worth noting that accuracy mechanics in Age of Empires 2 are pretty cool. If your projectile misses, I feel like one of the reasons why this game lacks sometimes is that it's coded in a way that the projectiles are objects too, right? And if a projectile misses the intended target, it actually flies somewhere else. And if it hits something else, it deals 50% damage if there's just another hitbox in the way. And that makes the Arambai super powerful if you mass them up. Also similarly versus massed enemy units. Uh, it was really difficult for me to kind of show that off in the Civ overview, but I, after tinkering around the scenario editor, I managed to do that. Uh, by showcasing some, you know, so, you know fairly large hitboxes. You can see it in action. I like this unit a lot as a range support one, but you got to be really careful with this thing because it's it's like the same speed as a knight, so it can't kite them very well. It's decent versus knights, but it's it needs support. I, I really like it though with support. Just if you have something to kind of keep the units off of them, like helps the front and the Burmese. Coincidentally, well, not coincidentally at all. Intentionally have very powerful helper deers with plus three attack in the Imperial Age as a very nice combo. Particularly valuable combo versus things like Imperial Camels, because you need something to keep the Imperial Camels from getting there. Well, maybe we'll see uh, some missing action going on here, but it looks like, nope, he's not going to miss and hit any of these. No way he can take this fight. Kanye Twest just so strong, and this is one of the many reasons why the Indians ended up losing their <laughs> Arbalest upgrade, as if they needed more than what they had. I like how all the Forgotten Civs were really bad except for the Magyars at first and then then everyone uh, was just in a clamor about the Magyars being weak. There are plenty of reasonably good players that have vouched that the Magyars while uh, while weak were not nearly as weak as uh, general perception is. Uh, I think that they needed a buff and they certainly got their buffs. Uh, they definitely needed a buff but I don't think that they were ever trashed here. I do think that the other Forgotten Civs though got over buffed like the Slavs didn't get any changes, right? But the other three probably got overbuffed. <laughs> uh, the Italians, particularly, way too strong on water. They got some nerfs in patch 5.5. Indians, way too strong on land after all the buffs. They got some nerfs in patch 5.5. I think we saw some miss 50% uh, damage over there. That's pretty nice. Really, really powerful. Um, Maggers definitely needed some buffs, though. And I, if you wanted my quick opinion, I think that the changes weren't exactly what I would have done, but they were close enough, and I think that they will make a good impact, and that the Civ is not nearly as weak as it seems, and that this will probably put it on a fairly level playing field. Uh, the Indians might still be too strong. <laughs> we'll have to see, though. Uh, and the Italians might still be too powerful on the water, but it's difficult to know. What I like are balance changes that are done incrementally and small, just slowly chip away at something unless it's a colossal balance issue. And as I've hopefully proven from those tournament games where I cast, uh, which you can find links in the description too below, that the Indians, even though they're one of the most powerful civs in AoE 2 right now, do still have their counters. And I think I had a really good game that showcased that fairly recently. So I like them chipping away at things incrementally. I think that's correct to do, unless you're the Portuguese and you got chipped one too many times. <laughs> so I'm a general fan of the changes. I think that it'll probably put the Maggers in a much, much better position. So 
Welcome to stream, Epid. Uh, got some Persian War Elephants coming out here from, from Okerville. This unit is, by the way, like really not viable in the Castle Age. It's great that uh, Scission ended up giving them the trample damage that the Elite War Elephant has and that the Battle Elephant has, so they deal small area of effect damage. That's really nice, because the Castle Age War Elephant for some reason didn't have that, and that made it a lot weaker compared to the uh, Greater Battle Elephant. This is the type of unit that you really only want to use in the Imperial Age, uh, I would say, when you have the Eco to sustain this. What a powerful unit this is. Thankfully, the Rattan Archer with an additional one attack over the standard Crossbowman line really, really matters. I've talked about this before, but this means that the Castle Age Rattan Archer actually deals two damage to Mangonel's Colossal, uh, and also helps them out a lot against these high pierce armor units like the Elite War Elephant. Still, though, I can't help but shake the feeling that Flatch needs to make Halberd Deers or something to deal with this. This is where the Vietnamese and their kind of limited tech tree really starts to bite. Uh, gonna need to see some racks, but it is nice to see the monasteries coming out for him. The elephants are just pouring in. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, goodness, <laughs> Kanye Twest pushing in with an army of elephant archers. 350 HP on these bad boys. It's worth noting that the elephant archer as well does not have an attack bonus versus halberd deers. This is important because uh, otherwise, the Halberd Deers would not be as good of a counter. They're still not that great, but if you have ranged units at the back that pressure them, like Elite Skirmishers, Honor Group, and Bard Cannons, etc., you can actually take this army out. And I really like the balance changes overall to make the Elephant Archer, like, just l less absolutely insane as a unit, but a little bit easier to mass up with the cost reduction than giving them uh, some reduced stats, but they also get Ring Archer armor. All those changes, I think, really balance it out. It's just right now the Indians have just insane economy that I think pushes them over the top, and then they also... The Imperial Camel can be very difficult to deal with. It is amazing to see the Persian War Elephant getting so much play here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, what a nice game. I think that Flatch is in deep trouble right now. He has no masonry or anything, of course, and while he's in the Imperial Age, it's going to be very difficult for him to survive this, and the left side of the map is not working out so well for this team either. They don't really have a good answer to this, and I feel like Arambai are are not the answer here. Uh, I think he's making them because with Halberdiers, they are actually pretty solid, but he just doesn't have the Halbs out yet. And the reason that uh, Pete doesn't have the Halbs out yet is because he's not Superman, and he can't defend both sides at the same time and tech into everything at once. He is desperately trying, though, to get that well-balanced army comp that the Burmese really, really love. Interesting that the Burmese, despite missing two of the archery range defense upgrades, actually still commonly utilize elite skirmishers. And that's just because you gotta make them anyway. Look at the crap stats on this guy. But 20 attack, though, is no joke, especially since these things have negative two archer armor. Ah, you just, if the camels ever touch you, yeah, you kill the camel so quickly, but he just doesn't have the halb support here. Oh, I think it's going to be really difficult for Pete to win this battle, especially without any micro whatsoever. And that's because he's trying desperately to control all these sides at the same time. Meanwhile, Tokaraka with the battle elephants coming in here. The Burmese, by the way, with their plus six attack versus buildings. We will not really be seeing that coming into play from Pete. Oh, man. Looks like this game's basically over. Can't imagine how they could possibly come back from that. Battle elephant with a whopping gigantic attack bonus versus buildings will just decimate that super duper quickly. The Arambi are actually getting some good value here. You just have to micro them carefully, and you need something at the front. Hopefully, I'm showcasing this in action here. This is a unit that, again, is difficult to utilize well and, and super interesting. I, I had my doubts about the unit at first. I felt like it was too similar to a Conquistador and felt like an exaggerated Conquistador, but after playing with it a lot, you realize that cutting the accuracy in half from a Conquistador or making it, in some cases, slightly less than that. It's like 65% for Conquistador, 25% for this in the Castle Age, and 35% in, in Imp. Um, actually really mixes up the dynamic. This unit does feel different, and that's because of accuracy mechanics and it's just having a really exaggerated attack stat. Uh, it makes it so it's super good in close range, and it's really good against masked up units, but it just gets clobbered by Arbalest, like way more so than Conquistadors do, which have two, and then they can get plus four uh, armor with the barracks compared to three. So... Pretty dynamic difference. Uh, I'm surprised that there is design space left for units like this, because I really did feel like it would just be too uh, too much overlap. <laughs> Look at all the conversions coming out here. 200 food gone, and like, I think 75 gold? That's a lot. Make sure if you're making elephants of any kind that you're not only considering backing them up with other units, but you also have the economies to sustain this, and more than 100 villagers, and that you're also getting faith and heresy if you happen to have it. Faith making your military units convert 50% slower, and then heresy makes them die instead of being converted. Giant Apple, 
Didn't see if he died or resigned, but they are going to call it game here. Well done here by Tokoraka, Kanye Twist, and Okerville taking out Pete, Flatch, and Giant Apple. This team played very well too. Tokoraka is sustaining a lot of early game uh, pressure, but he did survive, and he's coming out here with the additional one range and the heavy scorpions. Pretty sick to see that. Didn't get to make any Ballista Elephants early, but that's totally fine. I think this was a great way to celebrate World Elephant Day and just something to mix things up. I gotta say, I am truly impressed with how good Okerville's Elite War Elephants were. Flatch was making the counters, but he wasn't quite ready. You know, he didn't have the monks uh, prepared in time, I think, and it, you gotta get a lot of technologies on these monks before they are an effective counter unit. We scroll all the way over here, uh, no, Fervor is actually pretty bad versus Elephants, because you do need to back up a bit, but that's not a huge deal. Lack of Redemption is really bad. The enemies are terrible monks. Ooh. Uh, all the Elephant uh, sieves lack heresy. Uh, I'm not sure about the Indians, but uh, the Persians do, uh, except the Malay. So the Persians, the Khmer, and the Vietnamese, they lack heresy. Uh, and that's just to balance out their elephants, but they do have faith. So he has an illumination, but again, I don't think he had time to get things like illumination and sanctity and whatnot, and uh, hopefully you get theocracy. You have to get theocracy, it's absolutely necessary. And illumination too. The problem with this is that when he's getting all those technologies, because they don't research very quickly, he's not making monks. So Flash just had a lot of trouble adapting in time to, I can't believe it, adapting to the speed of the Imperial Age Elite War Elephant push. Sick showcase of this unit. Great game. Uh, why do Siege Elephants damage allies as uh, your alert? I don't think they do. Do they? Yeah, I don't think they do. <laughs> GG well played. I don't have that much opinion on the Nations Cup teams, Black Winds. I, I wish I had more time to actually watch those games, uh, but I haven't had much time to actually watch them. Uh, I will definitely go back, though, and watch some of the games for sure. And if you guys want to see me cast them, by all means, feel free to let me know. I have a playlist of expert games, but I will definitely be doing more. Poor Giant Apple Man, 156 units lost, but this game was closer than it seems. Definitely closer than it seems. Yeah, he just lost a huge chunk of his base. Pete made a great play, by the way, by slinging Giant Apple a little bit of resources. You should definitely do that if one of your teammates is struggling a little bit, and you happen to have a much larger economy than them. Sure, it's a little bit of a blow to your own economy, but it's worth it to allow them to come back into the game, get to the Imperial Age, etc. So, great to see Pete doing that sling. He tried his damnedest. Uh, but I would say that this game... I mean, John Apple just didn't have time to boom up. We could tell that his town centers came up a little bit later, and that's just because John Apple is probably the most aggressive player in this game. And Age of Empires 2 is a game of strategic trade-offs. We see here how valuable having a large economy is. It's a 200 population game, but these players knew they were making expensive units. So they need the villagers to to be able to make them and well giant apple with his uh, heavy scout rush and his just other castle age aggression uh, by making the archer ranges the crossman that could have been town center money and yeah as a result he just fell behind in eco and then really killed him though was his kind of twist insane boom off the indians economy bonuses and then the imperial camels uh honestly like we're just good enough versus the crossman from giant apple and just destroyed those battle elephants so Gane Twist definitely doing a number on that side, and then Tokaraki coming in with the support. Great little teamwork there. It was definitely a decisive battle when the two of them managed to mop up Giant Apple's army with some good control there. And then on the right side, Flatch actually did manage to get a really solid economy, but it, it took him uh, it took him a while. He, I don't think he had much of an opportunity really to tech into monks in time to deal with the Elite War Elephants. And I'm not sure if he anticipated that many Elite War Elephants. Few people are that crazy. But it just goes to show that these units are situational. And in the right situation, they're very powerful. <laughs> Ogreville says 165 bills and running out of resources for Ellie's, man. That's that's Elite War Elephants in a nutshell. I would love to see some more elephant gameplay in the future. It's really, really cool to see them. Uh, see how they're actually balanced. <laughs> it's a great one, man. All right, GG well played. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, uh, you can find plenty more Age of Empires 2 content on my YouTube channel. Link uh, is below. As I also really encourage you to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, as well as thank you to those of you who show your support for the content you do for games beyond just Age of Empires 2. You're helping grow the Age of Empires community by exposing people from a wide variety of other games to Age of Empires 2, and you're also supporting my sanity and longevity of the channel, so thank you. Didn't plug my Night Rush tutorial this game. <laughs> That's true, I did not. All right. 
I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to do another game after this. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. More Age of Empires 2 action on the way. As always, appreciate the support. A lot of new follows today. A lot of it I uh, attribute to Mem's host. Thank you, Mem, for the host. And uh, the Maestro, I don't think I s thank you for your sub. Thank you, the Maestro, for subscribing. A Twitch Prime, hope to see you in the future. As well as uh, Chrono, not sure if I thanked you. I think I did. If you are an Amazon Prime user, you can actually subscribe to me with Twitch Prime for free. You do just have to manually renew it, but it's a great way to support the channel. And if you subscribe or donate to me off stream, I will send you a thank you note, provided it's more than, like, a dollar. <laughs> Stay tuned. And happy World Elephant Day.